Learning data structures and algorithms sounds hard, but it doesn't have to be. I've solved hundreds of leak code problems, gone through 30 plus big tech interviews, and even worked at a big tech company for years. But here's the thing. The secret isn't grinding through thousands of leak code problems. It's actually way simpler than that. And I'll show you exactly why. So today I'm gonna break down how to actually master DSA and how to start crushing those leak code problems like a boss. Let's get into it. First off, stop memorizing DSA concepts. Stop it. Memorizing won't get you anywhere. Instead, you have to understand the idea behind them. Let's take binary search as an example. Imagine you're in a 100-story building with a carton of eggs. You need to find the highest floor where the egg won't break, but you want to do it fast. You can start from the top and go down one floor at a time, but that's 100 tries. That's way too slow. Instead, cut the problem in half. Start at floor 50. If it breaks, go lower. If it doesn't, go higher. Each time you have to half the search space. So you go from 100 to 50 to 25 to 12. That's O of log N, way faster than O of N. And that's the magic of recursion too. See, you're killing two birds with one stone in this animation. You can break big problems down into smaller ones until you find your answer. So that would be my first piece of advice. All these DSA problems can be broken down into smaller bite-sized chunks, and they can be understood way more more simply this way. Whether it's learning about sliding window, breadth first search, or even topological sort, make sure you can use the concept in an everyday problem first. With sliding window, maybe it's finding the correct number of chocolate chips in a tray of cookies. Or with breadth first search, maybe it's finding the rate at which oranges get infected. Remember, the goal is not to memorize solutions. It's to train your brain to see patterns in the first 15 days. Once you understand the concept visually, everything else starts to click a lot faster. Here are some resources that you can use to actually achieve all of this. Neat code for one. His videos go super in depth on data structures and algorithms. And I'm not talking about his leak code problem videos. You don't want to get into that just yet. First, learn the concept. He has some really cool videos about conceptual DSA. Another cool resource is Hello Interview, and they do a really good job of visualizing DSA as well. For example, they make it really easy to understand the difference between regular function calls and recursive function calls. And lastly, Draw your own story. That's right, draw. You know those animations I showed you earlier? Yeah, make your own. Like, don't actually go make your own animation, but make a version of that animation using caricatures or stick figures. Once you watch some of these conceptual videos, things start to slowly click. So it helps if you draw these things yourself, and it just helps you that much more. So this is Bob. Say hello, Bob. He just finished his general overview of DSA concepts. Now I've advised him to start trying a few easy leak code problems. But then he asked, well, what language do I use? Well, Bob, I'm glad you asked. It doesn't matter what language you use. We can use any one. But the most beginner friendly language is definitely Python. But the point is just pick one language and get really comfortable using that language because eventually the goal of learning DSA is to do well in interviews. And to do well in interviews, you have to have a really solid understanding of at least one language that you're gonna code in when you're going through this interview process. So start early, pick your language and stick with it. Once you spent the first 15 days learning core concepts, it's time to actually start practicing real problems. But don't just start grinding hundreds of leak code problems. Not yet, at least. Start simple. Pick two easy problems per category. These are all the categories you probably have to know in order to interview well with DSA. So walk through these problems from day 15 to day 35 and give yourself only 45 minutes per easy problem, max. That's the rule. If you can't figure out the problem after 45 minutes, stop. Just stop everything. Don't bang your head against it. Check the solution, watch a walkthrough, or read other explanations. Then try to resolve it from scratch. Because again, once you understand things conceptually, then things start to click a lot better. So this approach gives you the best of both worlds. Number one, you'll train your problem solving muscle. Number two, you won't waste too much time or burn out on a single question. By the end of this phase, you'll start recognizing patterns understand how concepts are put together, and you'll actually start to build the kind of confidence that shows up in interviews. I know Bob is feeling a lot more confident now that he's tried this approach. Right, Bob? Yeah. All right, people, we're at day 35. Now you've got the basics down. 
and you're comfortable with the strategy behind the easy problems. But now, it's time to level up. The next phase is all about medium problems. And trust me, this is where all the real growth happens. Medium problems are the backbone of every hard problem. Most hard problems are literally just two medium problems stitched together. They're two-steppers. So here's the plan. Pick two medium problems per DSA category and give yourself one full hour before stopping. This time you can give yourself a little bit of extra time with the medium problems because they are harder. And go through the same exact process. So read an explanation or watch a video if you can't solve it within an hour and then try to resolve it. That's how you start to ingrain the algorithm in your brain. But again, you're not memorizing, you're just understanding how to problem solve. Think of this phase as game time. It's not meant to be stressful, it's supposed to be fun. For example, take the knapsack problem. You're given a backpack that can hold a certain weight and a bunch of items, each with a weight and a value. You wanna figure out the most valuable combination you can carry without exceeding the weight limit. If you think about it like a human, not a coder, your brain probably goes, I could take this item or I can skip it. Or if I take it, I have less space left, but maybe more total value. If I skip it, maybe I have more space for other items. That's literally the recursive idea behind the knapsack problem. Pretty hard concept that you guys just learned in two seconds. So the coding part, the matrix, the memoization, the transitions, that's just a formalized way of representing the concept or the idea behind the algorithm. So before you dive into syntax, visualize the decision tree. Draw it out, trace your choices, and understand what's repeating, the recursive part. That's where DP comes in overlapping decisions. Once you see the pattern, DP stops becoming the scary black box and it becomes something a lot more approachable. It actually starts to feel like just a natural way of thinking. So remember, it's never about memorizing formulas or templates. It's about exercising your brain to understand the concept behind the problem. Code will always follow. All right, last but not least, let's be real. You're learning DSA to actually get into an interview and pass it and then get a job. So eventually you need to start practicing in a setting that feels like an interview. That will also help your understanding of data structures and algorithms because you'll be collaborating with someone else. So around day 50, it's time to do just that. And hey, if you've made it this far, you're already ahead of schedule. The 90 day rule just accounts for a person's real life. You might be busy, you'll have work, school, other obligations. So 90 days gives you a buffer of understanding all these concepts and the coding part in a good amount of time. So if you're learning these faster, that's totally fine too. In fact, that's probably preferred. Okay, so now for rule number one with mock interviews. Do not, I repeat, do not start coding right away. Don't do it. Always go back to the golden rule. Visualize the problem first. Then add this new step, Q&A time and you wanna do this with your interviewer. Remember, in real interviews, they're not just testing your coding ability, they're testing your ability to be a good teammate. Are you communicating with the interviewer? Are you asking good questions? And are you collaborating with them rather than treating them as this scary person that's testing you on something? For example, let's take the two sum problem. The interviewer says, find two numbers that add up to a sum. Sounds simple, right? But you can't just start typing. You need to ask clarifying questions. What kind of data structure are these numbers in? An array, a list, a hash map? Do you want me to return the indices of where those numbers live or the numbers themselves? And what if there are duplicates or multiple valid pairs? What do I do then? Those questions show that you're thinking like a teammate. And better yet, you're thinking of the user or the, even the product manager. They also make sure that you're solving the right problem. Once you've clarified everything, write everything out in human language. Something like create a storage, like a hash map to store numbers for quick lookup. Then loop through the list. Then for each number, check if the target minus the current value exists in the hash map. If it does, then that's your pair. If it doesn't, add that number to the hash map and continue iterating. That's it. You've described your algorithm just like a human would. Then you can turn those steps into pseudocode. And this is more necessary for people that are new to this. If you get to the point where you've described everything conceptually and you feel very comfortable just jumping into the code, that's fine. But I would recommend the second step if you have enough time. So write out the steps in pseudocode, and once that's confirmed with the interviewer, then start coding. And honestly, the coding part should only take five to 10 minutes. It should be really quick because the conceptual part is the hardest part. From this stage, you've gone from memorizing concepts to understanding concepts, and now to communicating solutions. 
And this is the final step towards mastering DSA and interviewing. So keep practicing, keep visualizing. And remember, the concept is first, coding is second. So hopefully by the end of this video, you've learned the exact steps you need in order to master DSA. I've also gone ahead and linked a bunch of the beginner courses or resources that I mentioned earlier in the video in the description below. So definitely feel free to check that out. I think they'll be super valuable in your learning. So good luck and happy learning.